We've got Tim Miller on Piers Morgan. Tim Miller, who is a Republican, someone who worked on Republican campaigns, but he's one of the real conservatives, not a cult member. So while I would probably disagree with him almost across the board on policy, it is good to see someone on the right who is grounded enough in reality that they can shut down the propaganda surrounding Trump, even though it might not be best for his quote unquote party, right? It's being American, I think, that allows you to see these things, which is exactly what he does in a heated Piers Morgan debate here. So I want to check a few of these clips. And as always, just jump in with whatever context is needed. I, that was one of the most absurd interviews I've ever had to watch in my life. And I, I just can't even believe that I had to sit through it. I just took a couple notes here. Donald Trump was tough standing up to Xi Jinping. Really? He totally folded to Xi Jinping during COVID, did nothing to try to push back on him at all. Uh, Donald Trump really behind the scenes cares about what the right things to do are, that he's a listener, that he's a listen, he listens to people. Like, this is just ridiculous. We all know him, that his biggest flaw is that he's a perfectionist. I mean, do you read his bleats? He doesn't even spell things correctly. But the most important thing I want to pick on is that little exchange you had about, oh, oh it's so surprising they've never met. Do you know why Trump and Kamala Harris have never met, Pierce? Did you think, have you thought about it for a second? Do you know why they really haven't met? Tell me. Because he was a toddler and he threw a temper tantrum after he lost a fair election. And for the first time in America since the Civil War, we did not have a peaceful transfer of power. We did not have a ceremonial transfer of power with a former president like a man goes and stands on the stage and greets the next incoming president, where he helps the incoming team with the transition, where the where the vice president's team meets with the other. That didn't happen last time because Donald Trump attempted a coup and he had a temper tantrum and he flew home to Mar-a-Lago. So for context to what he's talking about here, Piers Morgan, his show opened with an interview with a MAGA lunatic who made the claims that Tim Miller here is debunking. I don't think him saying it is as relevant as attacking the actual points here. So we're not going to show that clip. Now, I do probably disagree with the sentiment of what Tim Miller is saying here about going after China during COVID. But in some agreements here, Trump constantly praises G, praises him as a dictator, praises the way that he rules and says that he wants to rule like him. So it's kind of hard to consider that kind of brown nosing also being hard on China. Trump's presidency is defined by him going against his advisors, usually at the behest of America, recklessly pulling out of trade and climate deals that went on to have negative effects. You can throw the Iranian nuclear deal in there as well. The attack on Soleimani was against his advisors and led to three American troops being killed and 36 injured. Perfectionist as a word to describe Trump is just hilarious. I don't even think we need to go into that. But the most damning point is at the end here. Trump was a crybaby when he lost and refused to transition in the politically sound way we always have, where he meets with the next administration coming in, shows them kind of the ropes and around the White House because he was too busy trying to stage a coup, rally his fake electors, pressure state officials, and send a mob to the Capitol. Ultimately, that is why he's never met Kamala when any other president in his situation would have met the next VP coming into office. It's a knock on his professionalism and his presidential attitude that they haven't met. Trump spread birther conspiracy conspiracies about Obama, was on board with the lies that Michelle was a man, and Obama still met with Trump, still showed him around the White House, still aided in his transition. But Trump himself, who Biden and Kamala did nothing to, by the way, wouldn't meet with them because he was upset that he lost and was too busy trying to defraud the whole process because of it. And it isn't something that should be glazed over like, oh, you know, who cares? It's just Trump, right? That's kind of the curve he gets graded on that I think is bullshit, especially when the right is going on now trying to blame Kamala, when again, any other president in Trump's position would have been there and would have met with her. Donald Trump ran on this BS nonsense and come on this show. I'm the art of the deal, man. I'm a deal maker, which was a which was a book he didn't even write that got ghost written. It was this fake persona. It was this Hollywood persona that he he conned the American people into believing that he was some deal maker. Then he gets in the White House and he doesn't even try to work with the Democrats on a deal. All he does is insult them. He get, he does nicknames. You know, uh, he trashes them. He didn't. They didn't. He didn't cut any deals. Donald Trump. Joe Biden ended up being the deal maker. Out of interest, that, that, can I ask you a bipartisan can, can deal I, on gay marriage, on me, infrastructure? Right, can, so that's you. why Kamala didn't go to the White House. He didn't. He okay. didn't ever invite her. This is another wonderful point. Trump ran on being this. He's a businessman. He's this amazing deal maker who would be able to get deals done in politics, even having to work with the other side. And then he got in office and he only widened the divide and made it demonstrably harder for the two sides to work together on anything. 
I mean, the most substantial border legislation that's been put forth in decades was done so bipartisanly and couldn't get pushed through directly because of Trump. And Trump himself, while president, pushed absolutely nothing through bipartisanly. And he even struggled to pass things when controlling both the House and Senate. He only was able to pass one legislation because he couldn't even negotiate with Republicans to get them on board with half the things that he wanted to do. And if you zoom out from that, from just the domestic sense of it, Mexico never paid for the wall. That was a failure in negotiation that he guaranteed would happen when he ran on. He never replaced the Iranian nuclear deal. No progress was made in the Middle East where he promised to bring peace. He didn't normalize relations with North Korea like he said he would. He was all around a complete failure at these negotiations that he supposedly was the best equipped to handle. I left the party in 2020. Very good timing, I thought. Um, in about November of 2020, after the election, I was hopeful throughout 2020, I was hopeful that we could get our party back from Donald Trump and get back to a more classical, liberal, traditional party that had a respect for the rule of law, that had a respect for our allies abroad, international relationships, that had a respect for immigration and the immigrant story and how that's an important part of America. I was hoping we could get back to that kind of compassionate conservatism after 2020. And then what happened was Donald Trump lost and, and he threw an extended temper tantrum. And rather than standing up to him, Rather than doing, rather than telling him, sir, Mr. President, it's time for you to accept your loss and move on, all of the Republicans basically went along with it. And everybody like participated in this absurd lie, in this absurd fantasy where, where every Republican was like, yeah, we're, we're worried about the voting machines. And I was so disheartened and disorient, uh, dis, dis, uh, discouraged by that that I wrote an article saying I was leaving the party. I, it ended up being totally correct over the next five years that now everyone who spoke out against Trump, like Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger has been thrust out of the party and people who are like embarrassing clowns are, are, are made to not be, to be the nominee of our party. And like Mark Robinson in North Carolina or Kerry Lake in Arizona, simply because they're willing to suck up to Donald Trump. Tim Miller is spot on here. And I do want to add that if you remember briefly after Trump lost in 2021, you saw some Republicans like Nancy Mace, uh, Mitch McConnell, they came out against him and were willing to push back against his rhetoric, his actions, his attempt to steal an election. But as soon as it became clear that Trump wasn't going anywhere and he was going to run again and he was going to lead his party, they all just fell back in line, hoping to cling to their relevance and power through Trump, going along with whatever absurd lies he would tell, even doing complete 180s from some of the comments that they made about the instance. And as Tim said, if you didn't do this, if you refused to bow the knee to Trump, if you if you went off at all against what he was saying or was trying to push, you were completely just kicked out and ostracized from the party. You were labeled a rhino, even though most of these people like Liz Cheney, like Mitt Romney, these people hold way more actual conservative values than Donald Trump, who wants to terminate the Constitution. I mean, imagine if a lefty said that. I'm just saying. But this is how the cult was formed, right? Before 2021, it was more of just like a hive mind, groupthink, homogenous type situation. But then it became completely bow the knee to me or you're not in. Follow and defend anything I say or you're kicked out. And when all of MAGA went along with it, that's when it became a cult. And Tim Miller did have a good timing of stepping aside from that rather than just, you know, being sucked into it and joining the cult. And like many Republicans, whether it be elected Republicans or lifetime voters, he now as a Republican is supporting Kamala Harris because she's the one closer to being a human being, to being an actual politician and not just a lying fraud.